In this video, I'm going to show you what an electrospray is and how electrospray ionization works. This is an electrospray ionization source. And this is an ion source with an nanoelectrospray inside. Ionization sources like this work connected to a mass spectrometer and tell us the molecular composition of things. One example of an application is the analysis of proteins. Ion sources isolate and ionize the molecules so that they can be manipulated with electric fields and detected with electronic sensors. The electrospray is at the core of many ion sources. It is the bridge that connects molecular biology and electronics. But how does it do it? It starts by applying a high voltage to a droplet. Ions suspended in the liquid migrate to the surface of the droplet and accumulate in the area where the electric field is more intense. Normal droplets are rounded due to surface tension. But with the ions accumulating in the surface of the droplet, the electrostatic force pulls the liquid surface out. When the voltage is high enough, something remarkable happens. In this case, at about 6 kV, the electric forces equal the surface tension and the droplet turns into a cone with an extremely intense electric field at the tip. A microscopic jet emerges from the tip of the cone and breaks into a stream of tiny droplets. The electrospray produces a spray of tiny and electrically charged droplets. Hence the name. But one thing is producing tiny droplets, another thing is isolating and ionizing single proteins. How does electrospray produce molecular ions? Electrospray droplets are very small and evaporate rapidly. As solvent evaporates, the electric charge is confined into a collapsing volume. Eventually, surface tension can no longer hold the electrostatic stress and the droplet explodes. That is a Coulombic fission. Columbic fission events produce even smaller droplets and, in less than a couple of generations, droplets reach the nanometric scale. At this scale, isolated biomolecules like proteins are ionized. This can happen via three mechanisms. Ion evaporation, where the ion evaporates away from the droplet. Charge residue, where the solvent molecules evaporate and the ion is left as a residue. And chain ejection, where log molecules are ejected due to columbic repulsion. The production of ions greatly depends on the size of the initial droplets. Producing very small droplets in the first place is very important. That is the theory, but those who use electrospray know that keeping it stable can be tricky. In practice, the fight between the electrostatic force and the surface tension is far from simple. I wanted to see an electrospray in action, and I wanted to see the instabilities. To better understand it, I wanted to see what the spray is doing when it is unstable. To make it visible, I made a special electrospray, large and slow. Electrospray instabilities in normal ionization sources are difficult to see because they are extremely tiny and fast. The spray is 2 mm. That's very large for electrospray standards. I made it slow because I wanted to record it with a regular camera. Here we have some modes of operation. Obviously, I'm not going to ionize anything with this, but this setup is fun to play with. Let me show you how I did it. The basic recipe is simple. An electrospray requires an emitter. In this case, I'm using a plastic tip, a counter electrode. Normally, this would be the inlet of the mass spectrometer. In my case, it's a metal plate. I use a cell phone with a macro lens to record this. This one is about 15 euros in Amazon. A plastic tube connected to a syringe to pump the liquid. A sewing pin to apply the voltage to the liquid. And a disc to insulate everything. To do this, you will also need a high voltage power supply. I happen to have one at home that can give me up to 10 kilovolts. I'm not sure if I have to say this because I didn't read the terms of use of YouTube. Just in case, here's my disclaimer. Don't do this at home. I also use more Scotch state that I would like to admit. Making a stable electrospray can be a challenge even with professional equipment. Filming a large electrospray is easy because it doesn't require much magnification and because it's slow, which means we can capture its movement with regular cameras. But making it is difficult because it requires a very high voltage. Sparks can appear before the spray is even formed. To compensate for this, I use soap because the sulfactants reduce the surface tension. This means I can operate at a lower voltage. Plus, the viscosity of the soap makes my spray even slower. I also added vinegar to increase the conductivity. Wow, look at that. Here we have three jets merging into one. Multiple jets form when the voltage is very high. And that meniscus is coming out like a strange creature. 
And here we have a stable electrospray, the so-called cone jet, the unicorn of electromicrofluidics. This brings me to the sponsor of this video. I founded Fossil Ion Tech in 2016 to make electrospray and nanoelectrospray systems for mass spectrometry, proteomics and metabolomics. One of the most effective ways to improve the quality of your data is to use the best emitters. This will help you get better and more stable electrosprays. The Sharp Singularity emitters are micro-machined and provide very accurate geometry with a constant inner diameter and a very sharp angle. There is a link in the description. To integrate them in your workflow, you will need to optimize the spray voltage, position, and so on, as that sweet spot is unique to each configuration. But this investment will soon pay off as you get better results more consistently, and we will be there to help you. In future videos, I plan to discuss common tips to improve the stability of the spray. If you want me to develop a particular topic, please let me know in the comments.